First Updates Now videos are brought to you by Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers, internships, and co-ops. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to learn more. Yeah, so we're already in week two, which is nuts. Um, and for those of you who haven't checked out the thread on Chief Delphi or heard about it through all the discords and whatnot, um, the Open Alliance came onto the scene at the end of December, literally on the last day of the year. And it introduced the six teams that would be participating this season. So unsurprisingly, 95 the Grasshoppers out of Vermont, who have shared their build season progress through a Chief Delphi thread or a blog for, I don't I can't even remember how long ago that long started. Long time. Yeah. Real long time. Forever. But they'll be participating, um, which is pretty cool, because they've kind of spearheaded the whole, let's document the crap out of our build season and show everybody. Um, along with them will be Team 319 out of New Hampshire, Big Bag Bob. And then we have Team 2826, Wave from Wisconsin, obviously. Spectrum, uh, down in Texas, 4481, the Rembrandts out of the Netherlands. And rounding that out, 6328, Mechanical Advantage out of Massachusetts. So Dave, can you talk to us about when this whole idea of the Open Alliance and really sharing the heck out of your build season came about? Um, and what was the ultimate goal between all of these teams uh, with this project? Yeah, so it's something that um, I've always been a big fan of as far as like documenting the build season and doing build blogs. Uh, I, I did a lot of it when I was in high school. So 2010 through 2013 or 14, I had helped document uh, 228's build seasons and I used those to like eventually get into college. Just being able to show the whole engineering process was like a great experience. Um, and then doing that, I saw that it, it created a bunch of really good resources that you could share with a bunch of um, other people in the program. So when uh, a couple of people, Ty Temble had uh, reached out and kind of brought up the idea of doing something like this uh, and talked a little bit about how beneficial it would be for the community and how with getting rid of bag, um, kind of having just an open build season, it's really not gonna um, take away from anything that you could do with your own team. Um, but if anything, it could really benefit to help you get feedback from the community and sort of help everybody out. Yeah, absolutely. And Eric, um, what did your team initially think of this whole idea? Because, I mean, obviously we try to keep things under wrap um, on our teams to a certain extent, but was it a really like unusual process for your team to, to think about how can we document and then openly publish like immediately um, your build season process? Yeah, so um, like, Dave said, I mean, the Open Alliance like just announced in December, but we, like, we've been talking about it in the in the teams. Ninety five kind of came on late, but uh, for the last couple months and when to actually announce it and how we were going to do it and all that stuff. But uh, when it was first like like you said, Ty, uh, you know, reached out and was like, "Hey, we're this is what we're thinking. Anybody interested?" I actually pitched it to my students and other mentors because like we've been secretly open for years. Um, mm -hmm where like, you know, you're friends with other people on the team. So you, you know, you send them and ask them questions. They ask you questions. You send them CAD back and forth. We collaborated pretty hard with uh, the Hawaiian kids um, for a couple of years. Um, I mean, they named their robot Wave Rider in 2018 <laughs> because I legit sent them our entire robot CAD and they modified their robot because they liked what we did in terms of lifting other robots and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we've, we've been open, but we just haven't been open open like this so this was you know we, we we created a new website and we launched it this this fall so this was kind of a another thing where we could throw a blog on it and kind of you know jump on this train and show that uh being fully open with everybody doesn't create uh you know you're not hindered like nobody gets a uh you know a competitive advantage by staying secret because everybody like i can show you my shooter but if and give you cad but if you don't actually take the time to build it and iterate it, you're never going to actually know why ours works. So, Right. And I think that's a really good point that you bring up. It's like you could just hand over, you know, a finished product, but until you kind of play around with it, um, you really can't just copy and paste onto your robot. So yeah, do you I mean, think... The, oh, oh, go ahead. The, the cheesy poofs, I mean, the robots are always look super simple, but they have amazing programmers and their like, and their code is what makes their robots really good. I mean, obviously they're really good at manufacturing and you know, they have little design things that you don't see unless you really get your hands in there. But if you look at the robot and you're like, anybody can build that, but not everybody can build that. So it's like, they could post their CAD 
right away and everybody would just be mind blown and be like, I don't know how we're actually supposed to make this work. Cause I mean, they had an elevator on a turret with an arm and it, it was just, yeah, you're going to think it's last year. Revisions. Like yeah. I would just love to talk to them to like get a better feeling for how many revisions of everything that they do every year. Yeah. Like, that whole be- robot was a no last year. Like if somebody was like, let's put a, uh, a wrist on an arm on an elevator, on yeah, a turret, a I would have kicked the kid out the door, but like, you can go home now. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a really good point. And what so in terms of um, like publishing immediately during your build season, how do you think that's gonna kind of impact people? Rather than you know at the end of the season, two fifty four typically publishes their entire um, like tech binder, and there's a lot of other teams that release pretty much everything towards like the end of the season. So how do you think that this is? going to be similar or um, really different in terms of providing people with immediate kind of um, insight to what you're doing? And then at the same time, do you think that it's going to create, um, like, what what do you see it doing in terms of students taking a look at it and other teams? Yeah, so I, I think that it uh, it's beneficial for both sides, right? For us, we found that um, I never really imagined that this would happen. I figured we would, as far as um, getting a ton of feedback. So I knew we would put the, the build blog out, right? And people would ask us questions and want to learn more about it. But something that I found with like the immediately as we're building the robot is um, I sort of come to the realization that I think that we're going to build a way better robot for doing this than if we were, um, if we were having a closed build because um, we only have so many, so many resources with, with our team, and we're still pretty young. Uh, kind of had a major rebuild this last season, so um, there are a lot of holes that we're trying to fill and go through. But all of as we're publishing our stuff, we're getting a ton of feedback from other people, being like, "Hey, have you seen this prototype? Have you seen this team? Like this looks similar to this." Um, just getting that kind of feedback and that kind of understanding is something that like. Uh, since we're so open to like trying everything essentially at the beginning of the season, the uh, oh god, you showed that video. That's I'm gonna get yelled at for that dangerous shooter. Um, it sort of it sort of uh, benefits us from the aspect of being able to get more more eyes on all of the products, so we can um, just sort of all of the things that we're not thinking about that are happening. People are pointing out, and if you take it. Um, as just good constructive criticism, then it sort of helps you get to a better end product, right? So it kind of helps both sides of it. So I think that that's something that I like, had I never thought of going into doing this, that has become apparent as we're getting like deeper and deeper into the build season, people are engaging with the blog more and the the Delphi posts and stuff like that. Like that's, that's really big to me. And then for both sides being able to inspire some of the teams that don't have the ability. Um, so like we can cut sheet metal, like design it at nine in the morning and I can have it on the laser at noon and being able to do like rapid prototyping with stuff like that makes a big difference. So being able to show those kind of like high level prototypes to teams that might not have those resources, I think is, is really beneficial for, for everybody. And so in terms of, um, like, I, I think it's interesting what you just said about showing other teams kind of the resources that you guys have when you were, trying to find like a group of teams that were going to showcase their build season. Um, did you try it like you guys as a group, did you try to diversify kind of the, the resources that each of the teams that are contributing to this have? So t- people can see kind of a range of like, you know, this is what you can do with X, Y, and Z versus you know, a team that mm-hmm. may have a, a handful more resources than. So I think that's more of a a tie question because he was really the one that spearheaded bringing everybody together. Um, But I think it was just him putting it out. And for this this first year, really trying to get anybody that was willing to do it, right? Because it's kind of a crazy concept being like, you're going into this competitive game. Why don't you publish your strategy and your solutions for the problem, right? So uh, I kind of started out with anybody who wanted to do it. Yeah, and I think, I mean, there were three teams in the list that are pretty open already. I mean, you got 95, Spectrum, and you got Big Bad Bob. And, you know, so those were three kind of like, yeah, let's do it. And then, like, pretty much everybody in the the Open Alliance talks to each other a lot um, through various social media platforms. So, like, we're in constant communication 
even before this open alliance thing came about. And I think if like you watch Spectrum over the years, I mean, from what they came from to what they are now, I mean, they're a perennial, you know, event winner now in the last few years in Texas, whereas, you know, three, four years ago, not really. So like it's this blog has helped them become better. And yeah, I mean, they're in Houston, so they're close to really good teams like 118 and, you know, other teams that are in Houston. But, uh, um, you know, but I mean, Texas is a big state, but, you know, you, you get to your arm in stuff and but like doing this, like gets you exposure to people all over the world. Right. Mm. I mean, so uh, Alan posted that, you know, uh, Corsetto has reached out to him and Corsetto posted too. He's like, yeah, I've reached out to Spectrum and be like, hey, have you tried this? And, you know, you got Citrus Circuit, Super Secret. I mean, I talk to Corsetto occasionally and I, you know, try and get stuff from him. That's not good. It's now we're <laughs> Yeah, so we have a question from chat from Pinchy Boy. He said, are we going to be seeing a lot more robots that are copies of others this year? Is that necessarily a bad thing for the community with losing some creativity? What do you guys think? Um, I think that's hard to gauge right now. I don't think we'll see too much blatant copies as far as like entire robots, right? But I'm sure mechanisms, um, something that we actively try and do every year is look at what the best teams are doing, right? And then try and correlate that to a game activity from the past, um, look at how the best teams did it and then sort of do that. So I think you'll see a lot of like, oh, since we're publishing everything, like our cat is out, there will be some stuff. Um, but I don't think there'll be any like blatant copies. And even if there are, and like a team wants to openly follow our process and build with us as we do it and wants to build a twin, like I'm not, I wouldn't be opposed or insulted or anything like that, right? Because I think that that would kind of be a, a cool process and you can kind of, maybe they don't have the engineering resources um, that we're lucky to have. So being able to sort of make a bigger impact it, as far as like getting everybody involved in the, uh, in the process and maybe ex, uh, expanding their bound of what they were originally capable of. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. Um, trying to read this person's screen name. It's uh, Holazola5818 said, thank goodness for 2012 and 2016 team CAD blogs, CAD slash blog slash photos this year. Um, I know on the Neutrons, we my phone has like our team Gmail logged in. And I would say in the last two weeks since kickoff has started, we've at least gotten about 15 emails asking for our like 2017 robot CAD. Um, how do you guys feel about, you know, we, we touched on it earlier, but kind of the, the idea of somebody feeling like, oh, I can just email these six teams and say, you know, I want you to email me this CAD, like your, your entire robot CAD or something. Like, how do you, how do you guys feel about that? Because I know um, something that I, looked at on 1678, so we were talking about Corsetto and how they're kind of secretive. In their student handbooks, we were trying to rewrite oh. ours. Um, they did have a pretty interesting part about, um, like, you know, the idea of ownership of um, content and ideas and, you know, keeping that within the team until the team agrees upon a, like, good time to say, okay, this is where we're going to start kind of letting people know what we're doing. This is when we're gonna start sharing video and documentation, um, which I think kind of parallels the idea of, you know, giving students the experience of like a, a business or like the engineering um, experience, like in the real world. So this idea of the open alliance where you're doing kind of the, the opposite, not just handing things over, but being really transparent. Um, do you think that there's somewhere where you can kind of reach a balance of saying, okay, like we're, we're gonna give you like X, Y, and Z, but we're gonna hold off on like maybe the code or something else that makes mm. this mechanism like really, really good. Um, yeah, so somebody who signed, like I signed probably three NDAs a week just <laughs> from my job because I work with, so I work as a manufacturing engineer mostly with startup companies that do like new tech and stuff and we help um, if they don't have the, like the mechanical engineering stuff in house, we kind of help them with their projects. So I definitely see like the, the business portion of it, right, where everything is super closed. Um, but I, th I think it's kind of like a how we're doing it, where we're not just like really, I think the whole process of releasing as you're going through sort of the process, it makes the CAD and the code that is getting released a lot more beneficial, 
right? Because you kind of, instead of just looking at the end product, you kind of get the whole, the whole picture. Yeah, I think that's, that to me is um, like the most exciting part of this idea of the Open Alliance is to see how each of these six teams really approach, you know, kick off to fielding your robot at your first event. Because yeah, like honestly, it, it really kind cool. of terrifies me a little bit looking at the other Open Alliance teams and like talking with friends and stuff who are on some of some of the other teams. Like I like I we regularly collab with 2168, right? And we're trying to work with them on some type of like climber this year. So it's kind of tough to find the balance with we want to be completely open, but they're closed, right? They don't mm -hmm. like their their lead mentors have have asked me like try not to and we've made some kind of like strategic decisions on right this process until we get to a certain point. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe until it's a completely flushed out idea that we know that we're going to utilize, uh, let's hold back that that mm -hmm. information. But that's probably like the only thing that um, we've ever run into as far as like not being able to um, like not being able to publish everything, I guess. Yeah, and it gets tricky too. Um, I know not everybody, obviously, in this group of six teams is part of a district, but about half of you are. So it kind of adds that element of, you know, you and 319 and 95 could very well be competing against each other, um, which obviously wouldn't matter for the three of you, but, yeah, you know, yeah. how open do you want to be going into your first in district event and stuff? So I, mm -hmm. I give you guys a lot of kudos because it is a totally different approach to build season um especially like looking back when we were in high school it's like you had to shove your robot in a crate we didn't have yeah, you yeah. know really it's nice high quality cool. cameras in our back pockets and mm. weren't like snapchat in our dinner and i really we were, so like i know we're all over the country but at one point i would like as many of the open alliance teams together to play a match would be cool i'd love to do that that would be really really cool so i think oh, everybody ahead, but Everybody but uh, Spectrum's uh, North Champs team, so. Oh. All right, we'll have to make it happen. We'll see if we <laughs> can take over a practice field or something. Yeah, somebody in uh, Slack says, all right, we want CAD from 125, 20, 26, and 60 through 28. 2026's CAD is on Onshape. Uh, we have our 2012 robot. Uh, 2014 might be there. 20, uh, 18, 17, 18, 19 are all up there, so. Yeah, so as we get more developed with throughout our, um, I'm going to be saving out step files. So like we're going through and catting our, our drivetrain right now. So once that gets finalized and I start cutting the sheet metal, then I'll, we'll publish like subsystem by subsystem. Uh, we're working in SolidWorks. We uh, didn't have the bandwidth to get fully trained up for Onshape. I wish we did. And there's not really an easy way to like actively publish stuff in SolidWorks. So as we go through the process, the students will kind of be saving off assemblies and, and publishing them. Awesome. So on Shape, you can actually just import native SolidWorks files. You right. don't have to do a step file, and you'll get better detail if you do it that way. Assuming maybe you I'll just leave. Maybe I'll just have like a, as we finish sub assemblies, put them into an on Shape file, an on Shape doc, and then just keep it live. Yeah, I'll look into that. I'll ask you about that later. <laughs> so Shadi's with two Z's uh, wants to know, does the Open Alliance also share all of their code? Mm. Um, uh, yeah. We will. Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, I mean, it's all on GitHub right now. I don't I don't know. That's not my I'm a dumb mechanical dude. Uh, yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same age. That was this. That was a bad question for us. Yeah, but, uh, I'm, tr so I'm we'll trying to learn programming, it. but yeah, we'll publish it as it comes. I guess I, I don't know. That probably be sometime. Uh, I'm sure our programmer is watching this right now. Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, if people do want something specific from the Open Alliance, I'm sure if you hop into Chief Delphi, there are so many great threads you can hop in and kind of add a comment. And I'm sure yeah, any of those teams would hop in. And we're going to hop back in. We have some questions from chat. Um, uh, Olazola5818 said, uh, would love to hear what some of the host's opinions on great products in comparison to the Open Alliance, Open Alliance information sharing. All right, I'll take it. I mean, I don't have any problem with it. It's still, like I said before, like it's, been designed but you it's not a finished product you still have to use it and test it and learn it and tune it 
So, it, it, and it's going to make teams better. Like Open Alliance is all about trying to raise the, you know, raise the floor, you know. So I think this helps. Um, I definitely don't want to lose an event to worse teams. I'd rather lose events to good teams. And if this makes teams better, I'm all for it. Yeah, absolutely. And to speak to that, um, I think we've been seeing more and more kind of collaborative platforms and kind of sharing of information to get everybody up to speed because I personally can't imagine being a rookie starting in this day and age in the FRC community. So it's it's really cool to see how, you know, different groups of people are trying to make sure that everybody at least has some level of competitiveness. Um, and another team doing well, they're going to be your alliance partner at some point. So don't want crappy robots. And uh, Connor McBride wants to know, where is Dave's bucket hat? Great question. True. That is a good question. You're on mute. Sad. It was because I was typing back to the students that were yelling at me that I was questioning whether or not they were going to release the code. They said yes, they were going to release the code. Um, <laughs> it's literally every time I have a bucket hat, somebody comes up to me and is like, wow, how do I get one? And then I give it to them, and then I, I don't have one. I probably got like five at the beginning of last season, and then they're all just gone. So if you <laughs> want one and you're at, you see me at a competition, just ask, and I'll more than likely give you the one on, on my head. Pass. <laughs> That's like no. real nice, real nice, but real gross at the same time. Yeah, no, I I wash my uh, hair. You know what you? Uh, yeah, you wash your hair, but that I don't know. Like, no, that's like taking somebody's socks. I'll pass on that too. Yeah, as an elementary school teacher, I know better than to take somebody else's hat and put it on my own head. <laughs> yeah, you get lice that way. Eric, you don't want to wear my hat. No, thank no. you. I've You're washed it maybe once in like three years, so you know it should be okay. Oh, yeah. it's so gross. All right, and we're going to move on to uh, <laughs> share a hotel room with you, dude. Yeah, I don't want to talk about yeah. this. Yeah, when I'm not at work, I try to not think about germs. I try not to be. Exposed. I don't know how you're not sick, like, every single, like, just working with the high school kids, I'm sick all of the time. You build an immune system. Um, really? I basically work in a petri dish, so it just, like, strength it. It sucks at first, and then you get, like, really, really strong. And then when you get sick, you get really sick. So, yeah. Good times. But Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.